Hey everybody, this is Rado and we're back to Hearthstone. So, I just need to do 37 more damage to enemy heroes. Almost certainly gonna get that done. And win two games with Hunter and Mage and I'll be done. So, ironically, this might end up with me needing to... Is this Warrior or Hunter? Hmm... This is Hunter. Yeah. Uh, we need to actually win, so I'll go to casual and we'll start playing. Uh, this might end up with me going to an arena gameplay because I have so much to talk about. And I don't particularly want to do that, so I'm going to try to hurry. We spent most of the last recording talking about the Nintendo Switch. We may have a few more things. Uh... Let's start down here. Frozen Bite, creators of Trine, have announced a new game called Has Been Heroes, uh, which is a look like a card battler RPG mixture game, top-down perspective. Uh, now, what's interesting about this, and I've put in parentheses here, poop, P-O-O-P. Uh, uh, because what needs to be remembered about Frozen Bite is they had a terrible Trine game that I only released like a year and a half ago that was so awful that they came back and apologized for it. And it was full of setups for DLC and it was an unfinished story and the... Frozen Bite is known for the original Trine game, and they messed up the they me messed up the next game in their series, and I think they did they canceled it. They may have refunded everything uh, to people. Uh, it may very well be that they made no money on it at all, and then I, I believe there was even more to the story after that point because. I think they uh, they then were talking about I could be wrong about this but I think they were saying that they very possibly were going to go out of business and stuff uh, or that they had to do a lot better and see I don't know if has been heroes is going to be a great game I think it's coming out for the switch it's going to come out for PC I'm pretty sure too I don't know anything about this game but I seriously can't trust Frost, Fro, Frozen Bite for any announcements in the game. Uh, it's as if like Sprint or AT&T commercial were on. Like when I see a Sprint or AT&T commercial, uh, a lot of the internet providers, most of the internet providers too, and I see what they're saying, I just roll my eyes and go, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm really gonna believe you. You're really gonna do a good job. You're really gonna give us a quality product and and better bills on the phone. And it's never true. It's never true. It's, it, that's My where I kind of have to be with Frozen Bite. Because even though they may have done a good job on trying, they, they haven't done a good job since. At all. Hmm. Let's see. I don't have enough mana. Let's take this and this. Um, so yeah, they announced a new game. They shouldn't have. They should. Theoretically, I I think you have to announce a new game, but I think they kind of needed to change their name too. They needed to do some some diversion tactic here, where they changed their name completely. And did not try to live on trying uh, success because that didn't work or that business's success frozen bites name success because that doesn't work every I mean everything has just a stick of failure on it right now uh, that they've they've made so 
part, parting ways and moving on would have been a good choice. Uh, next, there was a leak of a Mega Bloks Halo game that uh, somebody got and did a video on it on YouTube, and that's that's interesting in a few ways, I suppose competition in the lego style of games is a very interesting idea because what the teeth I am. because what happens after that point is it gives it forces it forces tt games to make better lego games and maybe care and Fix the bugs on the PC ports of their Lego games if they if they have to do if they have to actually compete. Uh, and the Mega Box game looked like it might even have better uh, better interfaces than TV games. It might put some new ideas into that genre and expand the genre into being something that's not just owned by one one person only. Uh, let's keep playing all right so i'm not a big fan of halo or anything and at the time it was probably canceled because they weren't just interested in expanding halo i wouldn't be surprised if this came out right after halo wars came out and they were thinking to themselves, we, we're diluting the brand here too much. Or, uh, we need not to do that. I uh, wonder. There, it, this Mega Box game was in development before the Mega Box Halo actual sets came out. Uh, and Lego won't touch games with realistic guns. Although they make the slight exception and they argue realism with Star Wars, which makes them a ton of money, so, uh, let's see, whenever another minion takes damage, destroy it. So, here we go. Sorry, paying too much to the game. Uh, but since that video came out, there was some big good reception to it, so maybe we will get a Mega Bloks Halo game out there, and I would be cool with that as long as it came to PC. Now, I will have to make the caveat that I have gotten Legos and uh, from a secondhand source, and that Legos was full of several Mega Bloks block pieces and while mega block pieces sometimes are designed slightly different and potentially have a slightly different uses the quality on the mega blocks is significantly noticeably worse as far as the actual things than legos uh in in a box of dirty legos with some mega blocks mixed the dirty legos had uh, had a lot better structural snapping together uh, functions, features. Like you could just feel it. Uh, certain pieces were absolutely like not going to connect in the same way uh, as well. And uh, the like injection mold molding is not done as well on the le on the mega blocks and the colors are inconsistent and dull on mega blocks so i i am in the process of slowly sorting out mega blocks and i'm probably going to just end up giving them away to a kid and keep all the good legos for myself uh, 
or maybe build something uniquely with just the Mega Bucks. But yeah, Mega Bucks are not as good as Lego. Lego, while incredibly expensive, does actually make good quality pieces that don't break unless you're throwing them against the wall and uh, they make a lot of custom pieces so their expert sets in particular make things that you can't even imagine or possibly build with just a creative set uh, I need to move on though Mario Odyssey uh, the let's see oh yeah that was one I was already talked about where I I'm thinking particularly that Mario Odyssey's city might be Splatoon City in the future. Well, no. That the city that Mario is visiting in Mario Odyssey will turn into Splatoon City. But I had already talked about that. Atlas does not know if Shin Megumi Ten Tensei... What was the subtitle here? Vigilant? No. It didn't have a subtitle. We'll go west. That's uh, what I wrote there. It's all squished together. That looked like the word vigilant. Uh, Atlas is a little weird about that. And we, we've had more up and down with the, the whole Japanese games deciding whether or not they're going to make games go west. Uh, in a lot of ways, now that the Nintendo Switch is going to be region free, it almost doesn't matter because they can just sell the games via importers at a premium and, and not have to deal with cutting in the Walmarts and the local stores in the West uh, for these more niche games. And certainly it will probably get them less sales, but it may not be enough or less sales uh, enough fewer sales that they are actually not doing the right thing business wise. Uh, kind of in the same way that uh, that novelty niche movies aren't going to get on the uh, shelves of a Walmart uh, for DVDs but it doesn't matter because you can import them from uh, novelty niche suppliers for cheaper. Uh, part of the online thing that will be uh, that you'll eventually have to pay for with the Nintendo Switch is the is a free game for a month it seems and then they're going to take this game away. It's going to be either an NES or Super NES game with some of those games having an addition of of online play that it didn't originally have um, but let's see let's see what this does ice barrier no nothing yet to be afraid there uh, the game lobbies and voice are going to be through a phone app, Someday which like that you. doesn't make the most amount of sense. Like, I don't... Like, so if your phone's dead, in theory, can you not connect to an online game? Can you not ma do any matchmaking uh, at all on the system? Like, I could understand the voice chat. You you practically could do the vi voice chat through any number of services like Discord or Skype or, or just your phone Such in general uh, already. So that kind of makes sense over the phone. Uh, another issue, though, is, is limited data on phones. Uh, so if you're sitting there voice chatting over the, your phone... You're still probably going to have to be on Wi-Fi. It seems like it's it's really just trying to use the CPU and the uh, second screen of a phone that you that uh, another eight hundred dollar device that you you're going to have to purchase. And lots of kids, particularly since Nintendo games are for kids, and they're never going to shake that mentality uh, out of me. 
a lot of kids don't have phones. There's plenty of parents that are going to say, no, you don't get a cell phone, or no, you can't have a cell phone until you're a certain age. And then all of a sudden this Nintendo device is going to come out and they're going to say, well, I have to have a cell phone now. Uh, Nintendo says so. I can't do any of the things that my friends can do. Uh, so then you're socially ostracizing your kid even more by not giving them a phone. Uh, plus, the whole thing just seems shaky. Uh, I need to hurry up though. Uh, we've still got a lot of things to talk about. Uh, Dishon Dishonored updated, yes again. And it's a very interesting story with Dishonored 2's updates. Because every time it updates, it adds a feature that absolutely should have been there originally. Uh, so, equal to this minion's attack, alright? Deal damage equal to this minion's attack. Uh, so, they've added custom difficulties, which I imagine uh, like that you. means you can set more settings than just saying easy, difficult, and hard. A mission select mode, and an Iron Man mode, which is permadeath with no saving or loading. Uh, all features that clearly should have been in Dishonored 2. And see, the weird thing is, if I ever get around to playing Dishonored 2, which maybe I won't, uh, but maybe I will, I don't know. Uh, let's just keep playing. Uh, I think I'm actually done with all the quests already. Uh, but starting an arena run doesn't interest me right now. But if I if this happens again, I will certainly consider it. Uh, we can, I suppose, play ranked play and try to get some of that. Um, uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, if I get a, ever around to this playing Dishonored 2, I'm gonna have to remember all the features that were missing on the initial launch just to m hammer that issue home. Like, this game was completely unfinished. Right, right up Bethesda's way of making games. Just what? unfinished games no. after unfinished games. Let the hunt uh, begin. Skyrim, still kind of unfinished with all the mods and all the uh, DLC added to it. Still has features that that are lacking and and you you have to go get more mods and more mods to, to make it a worthwhile game. Um... An interesting statement was made here, and I, I, I guess you have to decide whether you believe it or not, is somebody who worked for uh, the creator, as for, who worked behind the scenes with the creation of the Dragon Age 2 DLC Exalted March says said that they specifically didn't, uh, didn't cancel that DLC because it because Dragon Age 2 received a bad reception, uh, but in fact canceled it because they were moving to the Frostbite engine and were working on, I suppose, Dragon Age Inquisition, which came out and I think people moderately liked. So, uh, it almost feels like somebody just has some sour grapes there and they they're trying to trying to to change history a little bit but i mean what does it really matter dragon age 2 was a while ago and uh whether the dlc was canceled because they were moving to a new engine or because if there was bad reception i almost Certainly, some point, someone canceled it because of the bad reception. Uh, that seems a lot more realistic. And then maybe the internal excuse was that we just couldn't... We needed to move to this new engine. Uh, you certainly don't hear this a lot in the video game industry. At least I haven't. I haven't ever heard of game content getting canceled because of... 
moving to a new engine. I've heard of feature creep causing games to be cancelled, certainly. But, uh, not just in a total, uh, a, a engine shift uh, killing game. Because in game development, you don't change your engine at, at that point. You, you completely say, if we're going to make DLC, we're going to make it on this engine. And then we're going to have our other team, our internal game engine team, so our engineers, uh, we're going to have them work on the new engine in the next game in the, uh, while you do this DLC. DLC is usually the level editing team and the story writing team. And those are almost always the same people. And so you might actually you might actually be saying in a roundabout way the that the real reason why the dlc was it was canceled is because he didn't they didn't have enough people on their team um, and so they forced people who should have been working on the core engine to work on dlc when they never should have had that and probably would have done a bad job anyways but i mean that's all just speculation uh, Blizzard says if people keep playing pirates in Hearthstone, they may nerf pirates. <laughs> that's that's how you want to talk to your audience, Blizzard, right? Just say if people like playing the cards that you've created, we're gonna nerf those cards. Uh, I'm sure people will be as happy with that nerf as they have been happy with every other nerf, uh, which is to say so nobody's gonna be happy. I. You really can't satisfy many people in a in a game that's growing and changing this uh, this much. Uh, so the the best suggestion I can make to Blizzard is just don't change anything. Just add new cards. That's all you gotta do. That's how you make people happy. Add add add. Change nothing. Just let it go crazy. Let it go wild. Uh, the reason why people are playing Pirates cards right now is obviously they're winning or people are having fun with them. Either way, that's what you want the players to, to experience, so leave that alone. If you have to have a feature creep and make cards that are stronger than Pirate cards so pe people will play the new cards, that's fine too. Uh, we can just eventually say, boy, in 2017 I played Pirates, but... Here in 2020, Pirates is so weak in by today's standards. Uh, that that's work. Jeez. Sounds like there's a major thunderstorm outside my my house. Well played. Mm, I must have made the gods angry. Uh, the the Blizzard gods are angry with me. Um, Steam library apparently has a grid view. I didn't know this. I clicked on it. It looks really nice. It seems like it probably doesn't use icons for games that that are more independent and small because there was definitely not 500 icons I scrolled through. And I, so I don't know, maybe I was in a different thing. Unfortunately, while it looks real nice, it's not something I'd ever actually use. Well, geez, with this rain, good thing I planned just to do some scheduling of videos after this because this is really, really loud. Sims 4, kind of out of nowhere, added toddlers, uh, which, okay, but I still don't think Sims 4 is a good game to play. Half-Life 3 Alexa, has been said once fire. again to not exist uh, because... The, the general light concepts, begin. you know, we know it. They, they don't really care. There's no nobody at the top that has any real push to force people into doing anything they don't want to do. And uh, Gabe Newell has no real push or interest in doing it. The, the weird thing I, I think about Valve is they should just ban anyone from talking about Half-Life 3. And y anybody using the letters H, L, and the number three in anything. Just 
it needs to be that serious because there's always these leaks. There's always these, uh, these like HL three uh, file assets that people reverse engineer uh, in updates of other games of Counter Strike, and it's like. Why are they naming the assets HL3? I, I'm not sure if it's just internal jokes. I'm, I'm sure they probably are working on the Half-Life 3, but why is it labeled that way? Why is it not under some incredible, incredibly complicated code name that, that should never leak out? And with different initials, different things. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Microsoft apparently will make more privacy options show up uh, in the next update to avoid being sued by the Swiss FDPIC Commission, I believe, or FBPIC Commission, something like that. Um, so, yeah, things like location and, and other things that are being automatically shared to Cortana and Microsoft, they're gonna uh, turn on all, allow that all off. Although, uh, it's very possible those options only show up in the Swiss versions of Windows and uh, and then they wait a little bit longer. Let's hurry up here at the end of this game. There's was an announcement of this game called Husk, which is the Silent hill S game Framed by domestic abuse, that was the title there. Uh, no thank you. Really? Uh, I don't I don't see how that one's gonna gonna be an interesting game to play. Uh, we've already seen that attempted to be covered domestic abuse. Uh, bad parenting in general, uh, or beating on your spouse in general and it never was played right it's never done with any kind of uh, with any kind of subtlety or uh, or in a thoughtful way it is always just the standard postal uh, we're trying to get your attention uh, hatred we're trying to get your attention uh, style of game and and even for a horror game and it's it doesn't it's not even a good horror theme honestly it's a horror theme for a kid who shouldn't be playing a horror game and you want to buy a it's okay. a terrible uh, this guy's a it's a terrible thing if a parent knew that this game was rated in for kids and then uh, also had domestic abuse in it, and he still gave it to his kid. Uh, that's that would certainly be bad parenting 101 right there. So, like, but if you're an adult and you you you're not dealing with your parents, uh, uh, or if you're a really old adult and your parents are dead, it's not really a horror theme that you're going to have unless you actually were abused and then your PTSD and and flashbacks and, and it would be highly not recommended to play this game so who's the target audience for this horror, horror aspect it just doesn't work uh there's Troll and I had a story game trailer uh the graphics and the story kind of looked bad in Troll and I. Uh, it's gonna be a BT tier or less uh, game. Uh, almost certainly. And then my final thing to talk about is Awesome Games Done Quick is over and they raised over two million dollars for cancer research. Which is a good thing, but uh, personally, from my perspective, I didn't get as much out of Awesome Games Done Quick this year. Uh, not as many games that I hadn't seen. Thank you. A lot of repeats. 
uh, a lot of games that I don't want to sit through and watch again. It to me feels like I was just watching awesome games done quick like six months ago and I probably was catching up um, on their YouTube channel which subscribe to their YouTube channel is, is a little weird because uh, you you get like 20 to 30 videos every day for a week and then the rest of the year there's nothing they they don't do anything with their channel which is I guess fine because I wouldn't wouldn't want to really screw it up too much uh, so they raise money for cancer Thank research you. and yeah I have no new games to, to really play nothing really different I saw uh, saw little snippets of how how you can do a bunch of weird things and funny things with uh, with the well coin played. and Hitman blood money and uh, bring out your so dead. some play some games that <laughs> I like some Nintendo games and such and, and uh, like Super Mario Land I think was one of them and it's fine but in the end I wasn't gonna play those games anyways. So, if this goes through, I've, I've got a victory here. Uh, I think a lot at the end of the day just comes down to there's there's a a shrinking list of video games. Even with new games coming out every week, and I'm this guy's trying toast. to look at that a little bit more, and that's probably going to end up with a bunch of wish-listed games that I really don't care to play. But there's a shrinking list of games that I really do want to play, and it's, it's not anywhere close to the list of games I have played. And spending probably 200 hours playing Skyrim for the second time is only going to... Uh, give me more time to play games, uh, but yeah, particularly older games. I think I've probably gotten as close to as much as I'm gonna get on Steam. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm at some point where I'm at the level of. 80 to 90 percent of all old games that I've ever played or wanted to play I've already collected on Steam or they're not on Steam. Maybe if we got some new licenses of really old games uh, that might happen and we still probably will see a lot of remasters and such so that'll probably be an issue too. So I am now at 5580 gold and we did all the quests and we may once once we get over 10,000 I would like to start doing arenas the question now is will we make it over 10,000 before Blizzard decides to announce a new expansion because Gadget Sand is one month old now if I can't in the next three or four months get 5,000 through quests Will they be done with gadgets and and give us another solo adventure or will they just be done with solo adventures and give us another expansion? I'd like them to be done with solo adventures. I, there is a big push to have the major gamble mega tavern brawl be a permanent thing by at least a few people and if they did just change solo adventures to mega tavern brawls that wouldn't be a terrible idea but then they can't really get rid of solo adventures that way either because they can't just eliminate it I, the practice play needs to actually be expanded I'm just upset with the buying these things Karazhan, Nexramus, Blackrock Mountain, League of Explorers all that I don't want that to, to continue growing uh, but the practice itself and being able to actually finish quests on practice mode 
would be nice if they could put more single player in there. But I doubt they care to add any single player uh, ability really because this is a multiplayer game. Anywho, that's it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, comment, and watch every second of my videos. Remember to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to get notifications. And down below in the description box, I have links to all my social media sites like Facebook and Twitter and all of that. So friend and follow me, please. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.